This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. So in this series on editing portraits so far, we've covered natural skin retouching, accentuating the eyes of our subject, and shaping light on the face using dodge and burn. But today, I wanna to hit a subject that I think too many photographers forget about in finishing their portraits, and that is your subject's background. We would all love to have a whole variety of portrait backdrops lying around that we could pull in for different portrait sessions, but let's be honest and say that most of us have limited spaces and limited budgets. So how do we take that background that we already have and learn how to edit it in post for different sorts of portraits and turn one backdrop into many? So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add realistic texture to your backgrounds and also how to shift the color and hue to really complement your subject and help them pop out of the frame. And in that way, you'll be able to photograph that one backdrop that you have, and then in post, you'll be able to change it into a whole variety of backdrops that will suit the various portrait shoots that you do. So let's jump in. Okay, so let's take a look at this image. Now I've shot this against a gray background because I knew I wanted sort of a mid-toned background, but I didn't just want it to be gray. I wanted something that had a little bit more interest, maybe something that was sort of a cool, slightly textured background, let's say for example. So the first thing that I need to do is make a selection of my subject. And I don't need to make an exact selection. Masking is quite a complicated thing, and you can go into real depth with that, about sort of masking out these out-of-focus areas and hair masks and everything else. I don't need to make a super accurate mask for what I'm gonna do because I'm, I'm not changing the background a lot from say a white to a black or something like that. So I'm not gonna have to deal with crazy fringing. I just need a fairly good selection. And it's very easy to do that in the latest versions of Photoshop. So if I right click on this background layer, come up here to duplicate layer, go OK. If I select my magic wand tool here, it brings up this dialog at the top and all I need to do is click this select subject box and it will think for a second and you can see that it's made a fairly good selection of the subject. It's, it's really intuitive. The AI in Photoshop has become really, really good. Certainly good enough for what we're gonna do here today. And now I'm gonna come down here to the bottom and hit this mask button, add layer mask with that selection. And you can see on this top layer, it's added a mask to that selection. If I take off uh, the underneath layer here, this background layer, you can see that it's made a fairly good selection. I don't really need to do too much more to this. The only thing I might wanna do, and this is also a very quick thing to do, is come up here at the top to select a mask, which is where you can go in and actually refine this mask if you really want to. And I'm just gonna click this refine hair button. And that's just gonna help with that hair selection. Go okay. And you can see it's done a really, really good job of selecting out the hair. Yes, it's got a little bit of haloing. You could absolutely go in here and really fine tune all this. But for my purposes here, I really don't need to do that. The only thing I will do is I can see it's made some slightly weird selections in places. So with that mask selected, I'm just gonna grab my brush tool. And with white selected, I'm just gonna come in here and just paint in some of where it's sort of selected into the hair a little bit and just bring some of that back. So that looks fairly good. And that's fine. That's absolutely good enough for our purposes here. We don't need a super accurate mask and you'll see why as we go. So turn on the background layer again. That is our gray background that we shot on. I'm now gonna try and add some texture to it. So I've got this texture here that I pulled in. I'm gonna drag this on top of my image. This is the texture that I'm choosing to use for this particular image. Let's just go to edit, transform, and rotate counterclockwise. And I wanna look at the texture and work out where the light's coming from. This is important because you wanna try and match the light of the texture to the light that you've actually got in your image. So if I drag this out the way, you can see that the light is coming from 45 degrees above my subject from camera right. And if I look at this texture, it's coming more from the left. So I wanna come up here to edit, transform, and I'm gonna flip horizontally. So now the light is gonna roughly match where the light is coming from in the image. I'm gonna go uh, Control T or Command T on a Mac just to stretch this out a little bit. So that light's coming in from the side and something like that I think will work fairly well. I'm gonna take this texture now and drag it underneath the selected mask for my subject. That obviously looks hideous and horrendous. That's not what we want. First thing I'm gonna do is come up here to image, 
adjustments and I'm going to come down here to my black and white adjustment and with this I want to try and bring in a bit more contrast so this texture is only reds and yellows so I'm going to drag my reds across just to bring in a bit of texture and push the yellows up a little bit maybe just a touch and that creates a nice bit of contrast on that texture go okay now the first problem that we have is that this doesn't make visual sense the front of the face is in focus then by the back of the head it's going out of focus and then the background texture is in focus again and you can't have two focus planes on an average lens so that doesn't make visual sense to our eyes so we need to blur the texture of the background to match the fall off of the lens so let's come up here to filter down to blur and Gaussian blur and let's dial this in until it kind of makes visual sense that it would be out of focus with the background so let's say something roughly like mm, in this case maybe 15 ish uh, you'll have to dial this in depending on how your lens is falling off in your image just try and make it make visual sense and go okay and now again it's standing out too much because it's still only the texture that's uh, sitting strongly behind uh, the background but what we want to do is pull the original tones from the gray background that we've got in and just lay the texture over the top so to do that we're going to come here to our blending modes and go down to uh, soft light or overlay will work overlay will give you a slightly stronger effect but let's go to soft light and you can see if I turn this layer on and off now all it's done is it's kept in the sort of rough tones of that background but just laid the texture over the top slightly too strong maybe so let's just dial this all the way down to zero with opacity and bring it up until we like the amount of texture that it's adding so somewhere around 77 percent in my case so that looks great you could absolutely stop here you've got those nice charcoal tones that you shot against but you've now added some texture the light direction makes sense the bokeh of fall off for that texture makes sense and it looks great but let's say for argument's sake you also want to add some color to that background to create a bit of contrast and make your subject pop even more so as i said at the beginning let's try and add a cooler background tone that offsets the warmer skin tones nicely so I'm going to come down here to my adjustment layers and I'm going to go up to hue saturation layer and this is added underneath you need to make sure that it adds it underneath your masked and selected subject and I'm going to come up here in the dialog box and just click this colorize selection you can see it's a little strong at the moment but we're going to play around with this so with our hue slider you can select any color that you want your background to be at all so greens uh, through to sort of more yellows and oranges you could have a nice kind of brown background if you wanted um, and here you can change the saturation of that background and underneath you can change how light or dark you want that background to be but in this case let's go for that cooler background so I'm going to slide this along until we get somewhere sort of between these cyans and blues that looks fairly good I don't want it quite that saturated so we're going to dial the saturation down a little bit that looks good and maybe I want to just darken that background down a little bit and I think that looks pretty good maybe a touch more saturation that to me looks pretty good his nice warm skin tones and a cooler background that gives a nice kind of blue tone uh, to the image and really makes his warmer skin tones pop so let's take a look at what we've done if we turn off our color layer and our texture layer this is the original image we've added a texture underneath which gives a nice bit of interest and shape to the image and then we played with our color which has added a nice bit of color contrast between our subject and the background and the great thing about this method is if you just go back to this hue saturation layer at any time you can change this color at any point so you could output multiple versions and really play around with colors until you're happy with what you've got you could also have a nice kind of brown one looks fairly good in this case as well and that gives you a load of options in post to create sets of really interesting backdrops so that you don't need to go out and buy a backdrop for every different occasion you can output multiple versions of portraits traits and really play around and fine tune how your backgrounds appear. I really hope this tutorial has helped you and given you some techniques and ideas about how you can really think about how you frame your subject, what goes around them by adding that texture and those complementary colors, how you can really make your subject stand out and make a stronger portrait overall. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series, I'll put a playlist together here on this channel under something like portrait retouching and you can work your way through natural skin retouching, enhancing your eyes, shaping light with dodge and burn. And then obviously today we've covered adding texture and changing the colors of your background. 
In the last episode of this series, which will come out next month, I want to cover how I finish off my portraits, from toning the colors to adding contrast and sharpening for export, and also how I produce a black and white version of the same portraits and tone that as well. So make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out. And then lastly, just to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. If you need a new website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them as my website of choice for almost 10 years now. I've recently just done a whole refresh of my website. And if you're interested, I moved from the Wexley template to the Wells template because I wanted a slightly cleaner look and to simplify things down. I changed out web pages. I took out some pages, added new ones. I added a bunch of text, changed and refreshed some of the images in the gallery. And from start to finish, I managed to pretty much redo my entire website just in the morning with their simple drag and drop functionality in the back end. And because those templates are so clean, it really looks nice and minimal. It's very uncluttered and my work does the talking. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.